Okay, we're going to jump into automation with a very simple example first. Um, I'm going to make this track a little bigger so it's easier to see. Hang on, zoom in for you. You will see all your automation options in this same drop down menu as the playlists was in. Uh, so let's go ahead and automate some volume change, right? So this uh, line that pops up when you change it to the volume view is showing us um, what the volume is currently. So we have it at zero. Um, remember, our track is at zero. If I turn this down here, um, you'll see it's been turned down over here as well because this is the reading for our volume. So automation in general needs to change something over time. So First of all, just notice which um, multi-tool options pop up when we're in this view as opposed to the waveform view. Um, so obviously your selector is available, but if you hover over the top, um, you'll see it turn into an upside down trim bracket. So that uh, allows us to pull this up and down. If you have a selection selected and you use this bracket, it will only raise the volume of that bracket or of that selected area. So that's super, super helpful. Um, and then another thing that you will see tool wise is when uh, a change happens, you'll see that they, there are these little dots that are created. See the little tiny white dots. <laughs> so uh, if you hover over the white dot, you see your grabber tool <laughs> pointing on it. Uh, so you can actually grab uh, from that dot and move this down. Um, it will it will change from the previous dot to this dot. So the previous dot was all the way over here. So we just created a big slant. Um, that's kind of probably not ideal, right? Um, if you have other stuff going on over here, we just want to work on this one. What we would want to do is... Uh, make more dots. So if I put uh, a dot here, how would I even go about that? Well, if there's not a dot, you don't see that hand tool, right? So to make the hand tool appear, you have to press the command button. Uh, so just by holding the command, our little grabber guy shows up. So you would press command and then click this and you just made a dot. So by doing that, I can move this dot around and it doesn't affect the stuff to the prior to the dot we just created, right? So um, you already just did some automation. Uh, if you want this, say you wanted this to fade out, uh, you would create maybe another dot or just grab the one that's already populated that we just made. But say we didn't have any of that, let's do this again. I just deleted all of that, so um, which is something you should know that you can do. You can select everything and then hit the delete button and it just makes all the dots go away. So first I'm going to hold my command and click a dot, make a dot, <laughs> and then I'm gonna make another dot. So this is like, okay, we are clearly just working within this section. Now I'm gonna make yet another dot and uh, make my fade down or fade out. Right. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Whatever you end up having to do, whatever volume changes you're going to want to make, uh, you can do it this way. Volume in particular, though, I'd like to make a recommendation. If it's just volume, I suggest to actually not even do it on this track. I suggest that you would do it on your auxiliary on your auxiliary track um, because, and I'll explain why. So if we went ahead and had that automated right on our track, when it comes to time to mix, um, I like to keep the faders, like your overall most common mix position for that volume. But if, if we have it automated, uh, watch what happens to the fader. When we With that being automated now, uh, I can't change my mind later on like, mm, you know what? So I guess it's goodbye. I wanted 
to change that volume, but then it wouldn't let me. It just went back to what it's, what it's now automated as. So once you automate anything, um, your volume is now not really uh, changeable by the fader. Oh, I guess it's goodbye. It's just going to pop back to how it's written because this overrides you just moving faders around. So that's why I suggest um, doing it down here instead. So I'm going to make my selection up here. I'm going to do, uh, actually, I'm going to hold the shift key and just click and it's going to also select over here and go ahead and drop my volume that way. So now you can see when I press play, um, the, the fader on the track is going to be uh, movable. Do just your volume automation on the auxiliary tracks. Um, so let's look at what panning would sound like if, if you want. And this is quite fun to do. So command, click, make a dot, qu command, click, make another dot, make another dot, make another dot. I'm going to drag this dot down and um, maybe I'm even going to make another dot and maybe I'll drag it all the way up. So this is a funny shape it's going to be doing and let's see what that looks like um, from our mix window. Here's our pan panning knob. Cool so and then it just the automation ended so it popped back to where it previously was. So that is, I mean, that's pretty much the gist of automation. It's basically how it works. So now, if you want to automate cooler things, <laughs> and this is where producing kind of starts. Um, so I'm just going to show you very basic one thing that you might want to do. Um, I'll show you two things. All right. So uh, say you want to automate the EQ uh, low pass filter effect. So I put this low pass filter on, remember, and um, say I want it to gradually do this. Watch. Watch and listen. Is it a heartbreak if I don't take my time moving on? I said I need to be broken with one song. It ain't for me, baby, sorry, but we don't be long. That was one strike and I'm gone. So say you wanted to do that. Um, I wasn't automating. I was just moving things around. So if I press play, it's not like it remembers what I did. I'd have to actually program it to do what I want. Under this menu is where you would find the things you can automate. But I don't see anything that says we can automate that. Uh, that's because we have to assign it the ability to do so. And that is done within the plugin itself. So you'd put the plugin on your track that you're automating. And it's actually this plugin automation enable folder. So it's like this folder icon, right? Uh, super clear, but it's all, it always looks like that on every plugin. So you would uh, just click on that folder. And these are the parameters that you can assign. So <laughs> this is literally a list of every single button or knob or thing you can do with <laughs> with this plugin so it's a little bit confusing so i'm basically gonna be making the frequency go down on this parameter i happen to know what parameter this is this is the low pass frequency and just for fun i'm gonna also add the high pass frequency uh, and show you that too so you have to go find it so here it is high pass frequency not the same as high band so um, I have those selected right, by just uh, clicking on them so I have to hold command and click to have a second thing highlighted I'm also going to show you how to uh, automate the master bypass because that might be useful as well so I'm going to add those three parameters and I'm going to say only these can be automated so I'm going to hit okay now if I click here I have a whole new menu of things I'm allowed to now automate 
So uh, it looks a lot like the volume uh, and panning thing. So I'm going to automate the low pass um, just to show you. I'm going to keep this open. But basically, now this line is showing me whatever, whatever this says. So this line is showing me the low pass frequency. If I put my command grabber guy to make a dot, if you look all the way to the left, uh, it's showing you what uh, frequencies I'm working with. If I let go, see it moved. So, so I'm gonna keep it all the way up. So this is all, all the way at 20,000 hertz right now. I'm gonna add a command click dot there. I'm gonna make a command click dot here. And then I'm going to, I'm gonna automate this to go all the way down over time. So this is what it looks like. Is it a heartbreak if I don't take my time moving on? I said I need to be broken with all the fear and talk. It ain't for me, baby, it's for me, baby, baby, So that's really cool. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something similar to what I did with the panning. I'm going to add another dot, and I'm going to bring it back up. So I'm going to make it go up and down. Is it a heartbreak if I don't take my time moving on? I said I need to be broken with all the fear and talk. It ain't for me, baby, sorry, but we don't belong. That was one strike and I'm gone. So it's kind of like closing and then a reopening, right? Um, and now I want to play with the high pass. So the low pass is done. It's going to keep doing that every time now. So once it gets to the middle, I thought it'd be fun to have it kind of like chase the other one. And I think that will make a cool like drop effect. So now, uh, ooh, okay, check it out. So even though... I have enabled this high pass frequency to be uh, automated uh, out so it's not doing anything, but the frequency knob is still doing its job. It's moving, but uh, we haven't enabled that function at all. So um, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, maybe I'll make it a little softer, a little wider of a cue there. So, so now let's see what happens. Is it a heartbreak if I don't take my time moving on? I said I need to be broken with one fear and talk. It ain't for me, baby, sorry, but we don't belong. That was one strike and I'm gone. You Kind of a cool effect, so um, be aware that that's something you might want to do. Uh, another thing that's just good to know and to have is simply the master bypass. One thing I, I do a lot when I just know that I'm only using this uh, automated effect for one section only is I'll open the master bypass automation and then I'll actually just turn the whole thing off. So the whole entire song is master bypassed, right? Um, and then I'll just select the area that I don't want bypassed that I want on and I'll turn, I'll turn it on just right there. One more example of a master bypass scenario. Um, I'm going to use another fun effect. Let's use that decapitator distortion plugin. Uh, so put this on. I'm going to like just like shift to mid driver preset. Uh, this is what it sounds like. Is it a heartbreak if I don't take my time moving on? I'm going to open up the automation folder and I'm just going to allow the bypass. Uh, to be a an automatable <laughs> parameter. I'm gonna close that. Um, so now the decapitator uh, bypass is part of this menu. So I'm just gonna say, I just want the first line of this to be decapitated. <laughs> so uh, another thing is like when you're in this, this screen versus the wave, if you have your selector tool, you can double click on a wave and it actually highlights it. Um, and then I'm gonna hold shift and double click on the last of the waves. And I just selected that whole area. So I'm just gonna bypass this area so that it shuts off when it gets to here. So uh, listening to that. Is it a heartbreak if I don't take my time moving on? I said I need to be broken with one fear and talk. Cool, so we just did a bunch of automation. <laughs> um, cool. 
So remember I said this is the only way I do automation is I feel like so much more in control doing it this way, but there is another way to do it. And that would be putting this into write mode. So it's always in read mode. It means it's just whatever's here, it's reading it and it's going to play what it, what it reads, right? Um, you can switch this into write mode and you will be able to in real time write whatever parameter is allowed like in this folder will be writable, right? So if I press play and then I change the bypass, see how it's read? Uh, that means it's in write mode and, and it's automation ready. So I can press play and I'm going to write some automation in real time by playing with the plugin while it's actually going. So it'll look like this. Is it a heartbreak if I don't take my time moving on? So check it out. It overwrote what I did. It automatically changed to latch mode, which lets me continue doing it uh, so it's kind of reading and writing at the same time. If I don't change anything, it won't write anything new. But if I change something, it will. So, Is it a heartbreak if so notice it didn't change anything. But if I, Is it a heartbreak if I don't take see how it wrote as soon as I did something new. I don't use it this way. However, there is a case where I do sometimes use this write mode. And it is when I simply have no idea what the name of the parameter is that I want to change. So this is like a cheat. This is a way to cheat pretty much. So basically, uh, let's say, I mean, it's pretty clearly labeled, so <laughs> I have no excuses, but let's just pretend I was like, well, I don't know how to change the drive button. Uh, maybe I don't see something clearly labeled like drive. Obviously, it's right there, but let's just pretend it's like a bunch of weird parameters. I mean, this is probably a better example. Sorry. Sorry, this is probably a better example. The EQ has a lot of a lot of parameters. Say say you didn't know what the name of one of the things you wanted to do was. Um, then in that case, what I would actually do is I would uh, select all of them. I would add everything to the automation enabled. And I would hit OK. So basically... Now you see red little red boxes everywhere because like everything is is armed to be recorded if I change something. So um, I'm going to just put it in write mode and I'm just going to play around and make some weird stuff happen <laughs> and it's going to remember what I did. Is it a heartbreak if I don't take my time over me? It's what I need to be broken with wrong being strong. It ain't for me, baby, sorry, but we don't belong. That was one strike and I'm gone. Okay, so everything I just did has been written and will be remembered. Even though I didn't really remember the names of the things to do it, like, through, um, like, I could do it this way. Okay, so sh that's showing you that's something I wrote. And I didn't even realize I did it. So, is it a heartbreak if I don't take my time over me? It's what I need to be broken with wrong being strong. It ain't for me, baby. Sorry, but we don't belong. That was one strike and I'm gone. You yeah, so <laughs> that's a case where I would maybe actually do the right mode, but that's really it. That's that's really all automation is. It's pretty cool when you start realizing how much um, capability you have and you can really customize some sounds. Uh, it's not even not even that scary. <laughs>Okay, so one other thing I wanted to talk about today was um, this thing called the commit function. I've been referencing CPU optimization a lot because, guys, you're going to experience your computer slowing down or, like, potentially crashing if you have, like, too many plugins or whatever. So 
we just always want to be optimizing. And as you can see, like my, my stuff's pretty fast. I'm running off of a laptop, guys. One thing I will do when I know like, okay, all of my plugins here, I'm committing to them. A better example might be the lead to track. Like I know that I'm happy with the way this sounds with this auto tune on, right? But I want to free up some CPU energy <laughs> and I'm going to commit to this and I'm going to process it in place so that I no longer need to be using the auto tune. So the way I would do that um, is to make sure to select just the track I want to commit and I will hold control or you would do right click to click on this and you see this commit option is right here. I'll hit that um, and I, you can commit the entire track or you can commit just a section. I basically just always do the entire track. Um, sure, you can consolidate my clips. Um, that basically just makes them all one big waveform instead of seeing all the cuts, um, as you will see. And then this section is what do you want it to do with the unused track? Because it basically creates a brand new track with the new committed wave. What I do is hide and make it an active um, I'm just going to change this, though, to make an active, just so you can see how it creates a whole, like, second track. So hit OK. It's going to process it. Rendering. Um, cool. I actually uh, rendered this while the volume knob was way low, so it actually uh, committed it at such a low volume. I kind of don't want that, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this over. I'm actually going to control click this and I'm going to delete it. It's going to yell at me and say, wait, you don't want to throw away audio. And I'm going to say, yeah, go for it. Um, so this might have been hidden over here, but since I just made it inactive and not hidden, it's right here. So I'm going to control click this and <laughs> make it active again. And there it is. So I can retrieve anything if I change my mind later. It's it's kind of like uh, being able to get divorced. You can actually change your mind after you've committed. <laughs> so unless you hit the delete button. So I'm going to change my volume up to regular and then commit it. And I'm going to so see uh, do nothing is an option. And then you'll just have two audio files um, like on two tracks. You never really want two audio files playing together because then you'll, uh, I'll show you what it sounds like. Um, it will cause phasing issues. Uh, some people do this thinking it will like thicken their sound and like be good for the mix. It actually does not help your mix. It just um, doubles two audio waves, making it louder and then fighting for exact the exact same space. So it's going to cause this phasing sound. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm committing this track. It's going to make a new one. So um, uh, the auto tune is printed on this, and I no longer need the auto tune plugin on. But uh, since I said do nothing, this one is still here. Um, and if I play them together, you're going to hear what phasing sounds like. You don't take over my mind like I thought that you might. <laughs> it's kind of a neat effect. Um, phasers are actually like <laughs> real effects but um that's not helping like thicken the sound like like you would think um you're gonna want to actually sing doubles of your lead so now that i've committed that i'm gonna go ahead and hide and make this one inactive because i don't need it anymore and i just totally oops i totally just freed up some cpu power for my computer and if you want to go as far as committing all your background vocals as well you're done with all your editing, you're, you're just ready, you're in mixing phase, and your computer is acting a little slow, uh, you can go ahead and commit all of them. I'm going to change this to hide and make an inactive once it's done committing. And the auto-tunes didn't just disappear, it actually made new tracks, and then it hid the other ones. So you see how they're italicized right here? Um, that means they're hidden. So that's the commit function, but let me show you 
this commit function only became available in, I think, Pro Tools 11 and higher. So if you do not actually see the commit function, that means you're running an older version of Pro Tools probably, right? You can do the same thing. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and show all my tracks again. And uh, I'm going to reactivate this guy. And I'm going to show you the very uh, extensive manual way of doing this. And I used to do it because I was my computer was crashing, so I had to. This is going to be something that we do with busing and making, making a new track to send it to. So we're going to... Basically, our goal is to commit this or print it, but what I'm really going to do is I'm basically going to record this to another track. So first, I need to make another track. So Shift, Apple, N, New, Audio Track. So I'm just going to name this Print. Lead to what we're going to do is we're going to actually change the output to bus it somewhere else. Right now it's busing to our lead uh, auxiliary, but I'm gonna send it somewhere else and I'm just gonna scroll down and pick uh, something in the 30s. How about like, this is mono, so just 31. So I'm gonna send it out, bus 31. And then my printed track, I'm gonna assign its input to bus 31. So I'm saying you're gonna leave here and you're gonna go over here. Um, and then I'm going to record the audio from this to this. Oh, that was one strike and I'm gone. You don't take over my mind like I thought that you might. I guess I'm alright. So I get that's enough. <laughs> you get the point. Um, so now I've printed this here. Um, however, my output is just one and two. I want to make sure that I change that to bus one and two. Um, so I'm sending it to the lead auxiliary because that's where I want it. You don't take over my mind. So basically, I just recorded this and anything that was on it. I could even have recorded any automation. Um, anything that was going on on this track is now recorded to this track. So I can go ahead and hide and make it inactive. And this is going to have the auto-tune printed into it. You don't take over my mind like... Sounds great. So that would be the manual way to do commit functioning. So that's it. That's it for this week. Um, homework is to just continue working on your song. And by the end of week eight, I'd love you to have finished a song. And by the way, just... This is set up in weeks, and it's totally, totally fine if you're taking a little longer. Um, we all have jobs. We all have uh, life, and so it's totally fine if you're taking a little longer. I'd rather you take your time and absorb it all. Definitely submit your song whenever you are ready. It's totally okay. Um, I still really want to hear it. So thanks, and see you next week.